Hello everyone! In this video, we are going to discuss the important concepts of force. This is our first lesson of ICSC 10 Standard Physics. Every topic we are going to cover in three parts. First part will be concepts, understanding concepts. Second part will be question and answers and sample numericals. And third part will be for challenging question and answers and numericals which are little bit tricky right so let's begin with our first part force concepts what is force force is something that causes either change in state of motion or state of rest. What does it mean? State of motion means if a body is moving. So, when a body is moving, it is said that the body is, is in state of motion. When a body is not moving, that time we say the body is in state of rest. So now again back to the force. Force is something that causes change in state of motion or state of rest. That means force is something that changes the motion of a body or if the body is in rest it introduces or it puts it, it puts that body into motion. Another thing, change in shape. If the body is non-rigid, rigid body are difficult to change its shape. They are rigid to change their shape. Non-rigid body are not that rigid to change their shape the shape can be changed easily. Then when the force is applied on a body, on a rigid body, it puts, it changes its motion or if it is, if the body is in rest, it gives its motion. Right? But when the force is applied on a non-rigid body, that time, it may cause a change in shape, right? The force is something that causes change in state of motion or state of rest and change in shape in case of non-rigid body, right? So when force is applied on rigid body, it causes change in the state of motion or state of rest. Right? You understand state of motion and state of rest? Force is rate of change of momentum. Now, momentum. What is momentum? Momentum is product of its mass and velocity. Right? You understand this notation, arrow, on the top of the letter, velocity has it. It is, it indicates it is vector. What is vector? Vector is the quantity which has direction also. Direction also, right? So, the physical quantities which has magnitude as well as direction, those quantities are called vector quantities. We know velocity is vector quantity. Okay, now back to the force. 
uh, okay what is momentum momentum is the product of mass and velocity momentum is also a vector quantity okay now what is force force is this should be small d okay just a small correction this should be small d like this okay it is called difference okay so what is force force is difference in momentum of a body divided by difference in time means what if a body is in motion right so it has got some velocity v right and in one second the velocity changes right if velocity changes its momentum will change right so the the change in momentum okay due to change in velocity over the time okay so this is the time duration and this is the change in momentum this should be small d okay so we are just putting the expression of momentum here what is momentum it is a product of mass and velocity right here mass and velocity we are just substituting the expression for momentum mass we consider mass as a constant okay then we are taking the mass out because it is constant for velocity 1 velocity 2 right and then we are we have difference in velocity divided by duration of time and we know that it is acceleration right difference in velocity over the duration of time right so this is how we get the expression for force is equal to mass into acceleration right now non rigid body causes change in shape because it is non rigid body or force can cause change in state of motion or state of rest or both okay in case of non rigid body change in shape is possible change in state of motion or state of rest is possible or it can be combination of both right this is force types of motion right this is just revision of what we have done in our previous standard that is ninth standard okay what are types of motion translational motion or linear motion when a body moves in a straight line it is called translational motion or linear motion right another type of motion is rotational motion right when the body is rotating okay like a wheel okay and the third type of motion is combination of both linear motion rotational motion okay like wheel when we are running our car okay wheel is rotating but at the same time the whole wheel is moving in linear direction right so translational motion that is linear motion in a straight line rotational motion it is rotating around its axis and it is a combination of both that is a third type okay now what is moment of force torque okay it is turning effect of a force is called moment of that force that is torque what is turning effect now consider a ball we are throwing a ball okay in a straight line then ball doesn't rotate right but when we are rolling the ball 
ball rotates it moves definitely it moves ahead but it rotates right so or when we are spinning our ball right we are turning it right when we are bowling in cricket we spin the ball so we are turning it right so we are applying force to turn it right so the turning effect of a force we are applying force and its effect is turning so turning effect of a force is called moment of that force and another word for it is torque right every rotating body has a point okay which doesn't rotate you try to rotate ball okay in your hand and you will notice that the center of the ball is not rotating at all right so that point is called pivot point okay which does not rotate rest all the particles all the points on the ball rotate but one point doesn't rotate that is the pivot point sometimes um now in case of wheel right the center is fixed to the axle right for the car wheel is fixed attached to the axle right so that point doesn't rotate rest all the points on the of the wheel rotate right so that becomes the pivot point of the rotating body like this here okay if this is a force applied this point won't move rest all the points will rotate right so this is called pivot okay factors affecting the turning of a body right so basically for turning you turn faster right or slow right so that effect depends on magnitude of force we are applying if we apply more force it rotate fast another thing which affects this how fast it will turn or how will it turn the second factor affecting it is perpendicular distance of the line of action of force from the axis of rotation that is pivoted point right now let's break it down the line of action of force whenever we are applying force the line in which we are applying the force is called line of action of a force right we know pivot point we know line of action of force right so what we are talking about we are talking about the perpendicular distance between pivot point and the line of force line of action of force right so the perpendicular distance of the line of action of force line of action of force from the axis of rotation pivoted point now when when a body is rotating okay we know that one point is not rotating at all that is pivot point right if you uh, pass a line through this point that will get axis okay take an example of an our earth our earth okay earth is rotating right it is rotating it the its pivot is at the center of the earth right and we know the axis of the earth we remember geography yes so similarly every rotating body has its axis of rotation which passes through the point of pivot right so the perpendicular distance of the line of force and the pivot point or the axis of rotation perpendicular okay not like this not like this 90 degrees that is the shortest distance correct you know that right you remember geometry very good so shortest distance from the pivot point okay shorter distance shortest distance of the line of action of force from the pivot point okay 
so we saw the factors affecting turning body magnitude of force more the force more will be the turning and the perpendicular distance of the line of action of force from the axis of rotation right okay as the distance increases turning effect will be more okay as the distance this distance perpendicular distance this distance increases the turning effect will be more okay with the same force if just the distance is increased the turning effect will be more right so now with this we get our weight yeah with this we get our formula magnitude of moment of force right so magnet so what is magnitude of because again moment is also moment of force is also a vector quantity it has got direction it has got magnitude also right so this formula is for magnitude of okay magnitude of moment of force what is it magnitude of force multiplied by perpendicular distance of the line of action of force from axis of rotation now this big thing you can break into parts line of action of force okay this is a group line of action of force axis of rotation it's a group and then this will be very simple because we have you have to write this in the definition right so sentence will is little longer why because so many details are there right but if you start remembering the things in chunk in blocks it will help you right the line of action of force it's a group right axis of rotation is a group and then it will become easy so we saw magnitude of moment of force right so what is the unit of moment of force it is si unit is newton meter of course newton is for force multiplied by meter why because it is a distance another unit we follow kg force you remember kg force unit si unit yes what is it it is a force exerted by 1 kg of mass due to gravity okay that is kg force what is what are cgs units dyne yes multiply by centimeter correct for distance cgs unit is centimeter and for force cgs unit is dyne right or gf what is gf this is gram force what is gram force gram force is a force exerted by 1 gram of mass due to gravity in short weight of 1 gram of mass okay and centimeter centimeter is cgs unit for distance okay torque is a vector quantity just now we discussed as it has got direction what are the directions clockwise and anti clockwise okay now one more thing don't confuse between momentum we saw right and moment momentum is product of ma mass and velocity and this is moment of force okay it is a turning effect okay though the two words are similar don't get confused momentum is product of mass and velocity and moment of force is turning effect okay yes ma okay now as we know moment of force that is torque is vector quantity right so there is a sign convention okay when the torque is positive when the torque is negative 
So usually clockwise turning, okay, we consider it as inward turning, okay, is negative torque. And anticlockwise, that is outward turning, that we call it as, that we consider as positive torque. Okay, this is a normal convention, general convention we are following. Okay, now, how can we change the direction of force? Because we saw that we can change the magnitude of torque, correct? By changing magnitude of force or by changing the perpendicular distance between line of action of force and pivot, correct? So, we know how to control the magnitude of the moment of force but how we can can we control the direction of the uh, torque yes we can there are two ways change the direction of force now this is a turning body i am applying force in this direction if i just reverse the direction it will start turning anti clockwise this way it was turning clockwise i just change the direction of force and it started uh, rotating anticlockwise. So, change the direction of force to change the direction of torque. Okay. Second, second what I can do? Change the point of application of force. See, now this is a turning body. I am applying force here at this point. Okay. Now, so it is rotating in clockwise direction. Right. That is negative. Clockwise is negative. If same force I apply on the other side of the rotating body here, and now see it is rotating anti clockwise. Correct? That is positive direction of torque. So change the point of application of force and change the direction of force. This in this both way we can change the direction of the torque. We can change the turning. Okay, clockwise or anticlockwise, right? Okay, now couple. Hmm? What they are saying is single force alone does not cause rotation of a pivoted body. Do you believe this? A single force alone does not cause rotation of a pivoted body. Correct. If you are ha having one disc, okay, which is at the center, and you can just apply one force and it will rotate, right? Correct. But no. Though we are applying just single force, there is another force acting on that body because the body is pivoted. Pivoted body means it is fixed at one point, maybe center. Okay, so equal and opposite reaction force is created at the pivoted point. Since when we are applying force, okay, all the points start move start moving except pivot point, right? So at pivot point, how it it is it is remaining stationary because some some force is balancing the force which we are applying right and that force is reaction force which is equal and opposite of the force we are applying right so this is how whenever we are applying a single force and rotating a body uh, like you consider the um, earth globe okay if you, you you all must have seen the earth globe right we can just rotate it by just one finger okay so we are applying one force right and it is rotating so where is the other force the other force is the point where we have the axis where we have hold that globe it doesn't allow the points on that axis to rotate right so that is the reaction force which pivoted point exert on the body right so, couple of forces is a pair of forces so we know that single force alone does not cause rotation 
for pivoted body equal and opposite reaction force created at the pivoted point cause the rotation so two forces are there right so the couple of forces what are couple of forces couple of I, so we understood that single force alone does not cause rotation means we need more than one forces right so couple of forces is a pair of forces causing rotation right we need two forces but how are those two forces couple of forces are equal and opposite equal and opposite see this is force in this direction this is in this direction equal and opposite in direction applied at different points applied at different points one is applied here here if both are applied at one single point they will balance each other and it will not rotate right so in case of earth globe also we are applying force on the globe and the other force equal and opposite okay is applied at the pivoted point right so two forces and that is why our earth globe rotates right so couple of forces are is a pair of force forces okay couple of forces is a pair of forces causing rotation and those those fo two forces are equal and opposite in direction and applied at two different points got it moment of couple now we have seen moment of force what is that it is turning effect of a force right so now couple is a pair of force right so moment of force when the two forces are applied okay uh, equal and opposite direction at two different points what will be the momentum so magnitude of moment magnitude of moment of couple is equal to magnitude of either force either force why because both the forces have equal magnitude so any of the magnitude you can take magnitude of either force multiplied by distance between the two forces distance between the two forces okay you understand the distance between the two forces is actually sum of the distance between one force and pivot point and plus the distance between pivot point and the other force right you can so it's very simple okay and this perpendicular distance actually this has moved here this is here this should be here so magnitude of either force multiplied by perpendicular distance between two forces okay this is moment of couple you will know moment of force it is magnitude of the force multiplied by perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and pivot point correct and now moment of couple because two forces are applying there so magnitude of either force multiplied by distance between the two forces that is sum of the distance between the one force and pivot point plus distance between pivot point and the other force okay okay now equilibrium of bodies okay when number of forces acting on body produce no change in its state of rest or state of motion linear or rotational anyways okay so what is equilibrium when number of forces are acting on a body but no change in state of rest or state of motion is observed that is equilibrium okay there are two types of equilibriums two kinds of equilibriums static equilibrium when body remains in a state of rest many forces are acting on the body but the body which is in state of rest 
remains in state of rest right so it is it is maintaining the state of rest even though multiple forces are acting on it this is called static equilibrium now second kind is dynamic equilibrium so if a body is moving okay so it remains in the same state of motion okay that time when the multiple forces are acting on it but the body if it is in state of motion it will remain in that the same state of motion it will not change anything for that motion okay so that is called dynamic equilibrium okay yeah now conditions for equilibrium how this equilibrium can be achieved right what what we have to do to achieve equilibrium right so two conditions we have to meet right what is it resultant of all forces acting on the body should be zero what is resultant of forces because forces is a vector quantity if we add vector addition if we are uh, when multiple forces are applied okay what is the resultant force that is the actual combination of all these forces what force is getting applied okay so addition vector addition of all the forces should be zero okay so no effective force though there are multiple forces acting on a body no effective force is acting there because all the forces are balancing each other okay that means resultant of all the forces acting on the body should be zero this is one condition but that is not enough the okay another condition what is that the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body about the pivot point should be zero algebraic sum because we know clockwise moments are negative anti clockwise moments are positive so positive negative if we start uh, putting together all the moments with their signs okay if the addition algebraic sum is zero okay that is the second condition required for equilibrium now why the only first condition is not enough because when we are adding the forces vector addition okay so there we consider direction and magnitude right but we don't consider the point of application right where we are applying the force right consider for, for that matter consider two forces acting on that body having exact equal magnitude and opposite direction okay then the resultant of all the forces should be zero because the magnitude is equal and the direction is exactly opposite but if these two forces are applied at two different points on the body and if the body is pivoted it will rotate right so only resultant of all the forces in action zero is not enough it is not sufficient okay so algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on body about the pivot point should be zero about the pivot point is very important right because moment when we are moment when we are calculating we are calculating with respect to some pivot point right so when we are calculating moments of all the forces all the force moment of all the forces should be calculated with respect to one and one single point pivot point okay and that should be zero right now principle of moments when a body is in equilibrium 
okay sum of anti clockwise moments is equal to sum of clockwise moments all right good okay center of gravity what is center of gravity center of gravity which is called cg of a body is a point about which the algebraic sum algebraic sum means along with the signs hmm? algebraic sums of moments of weights of all the particles of the body is zero means what consider a body which is made up of many small particles right now the gravity is acting on acting upon that body right so the body has got weight right so basically gravity is pulling the body down right so if we consider single 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 particle of that body a single particle is also uh, getting uh, it is also getting pulled by the gravity right so even gravitational force if we consider particle by particle each particle is experiencing this gravity force of gravity right so force of gravity is applied at each and every particle of that body correct now if we calculate okay moment of all these forces acting on all the particles okay okay about a point okay so basically we have to find a point at which if we calculate the moment of force about that point okay that should be zero and such point is called center of gravity so center of gravity is a point of point at which all these forces acting on each and every particle of the body okay okay center of gravity is a point at which moment of forces okay created by the gravity at every particle of that body is zero what does that mean if i consider a point okay and if i ca start calculating moment of force for each particle of that body about that point okay so if the moments moment of forces created by all the particles get balanced at that point that point is called center of gravity okay so we can consider that the entire weight of the body is concentrated at that point so center of gravity is very important why we will come to the next slide a solid body can be balanced by supporting at its center of gravity why because the conditions of equilibrium can be satisfied at cg what are two conditions the resultant force acting upon the body should be zero and the third one algebraic sum of all the moments of forces acting on the body is zero right at pivoted point so here at cg that is center of gravity all the moments of forces of all the particles due to gravity are zero at center of gravity so moment of forces due to gravity are balanced there now the second part remains is resultant force acting upon the body right so if we start applying the force at this cg moment of forces of all the particles due to gravity are already balanced at cg center of gravity now if we support at that point balancing the force due to gravity that is weight okay so what remains is to balance the force 
due to gravity moments are all moments of forces of all the particles are already balanced at center of gravity right that is what that point is right now we have to balance just a force the first condition we have to satisfy so we if we support that means what we are balancing the force due to gravity that is we are balancing the weight at that point right and the first condition we satisfy by supporting it at the cg right so center of gravity is very important in this case now how to determine center of gravity of a body right this is an ex experiment given in your textbook okay just open that it is very simple open that tech, uh, experiment and uh, try to work on it try to understand it's very simple straightforward but it is important to understand these concepts clearly right and when you do that experiment if you try doing that experiment you will understand and you will remember the concept of center of gravity for longer time right these definitions and texts they you may forget but if you do that experiment okay it's very simple it will it will make you understand better and you will never forget it okay so try to do that experiment go through the experiment okay we'll move next now uniform circular motion it is called ucm as a short form it is not in your textbook but just uh, as you will grow you will start referring you uniform circular motion as ucm abbreviation okay when a particle moves with a constant speed very important constant speed in a circular path this is an object which is moving in a circular path with constant speed okay speed is same but velocity is continuously changing as direction is changing right because velocity for constant velocity we need constant speed and constant direction but here in circular motion the path is circular so velocity is continuously changing right ucm that is uniform circular motion is accelerated motion with constant acceleration why accelerated because velocity is changing so it is accelerated and constant acceleration because it is in the circular path right so circular path so velocity is changing uniformly the direction of velocity is changing uniformly that is why it is on circular path right so ucm that is uniform circular motion is accelerated motion with constant acceleration whereas uniform linear motion now you, you know uniform linear motion you have seen it before right uniform uniform linear motion is unaccelerated motion because on lin in linear motion speed is constant right and the direction is also constant so no acceleration so uniform circular motion is accelerated motion but constant acceleration right and uniform linear motion is unaccelerated motion because direction doesn't change and speed is constant now note the difference between rotation and ucm rotation means rotating about a pivot point the whole body is rotating about a pivot point just like a globe and the ucm is like the earth of orbiting around the sun okay the orbit may not be circular it is just uh, the concept wise you understand the rotation and the uniform circular motion the whole body is moving right so don't confuse between the two centripetal force and centrifugal force okay now uniform circular motion need constant acceleration correct why because it is constantly changing the direction of the velocity to remain on the circular path right 
so uniform circular motion need constant acceleration to change the direction to remain on circular path this force acting towards the center of the circular path is called centripetal force right uh, i don't know whether you have tried it or not you try one uh, stone at the end of one rope or thread and try to revolve it round and round and round and round right so the string the thread which is controlling the motion of that stone okay that the tension in that thread is your centripetal force right so some force which needs to be acting towards the center because when the force is acting towards the center it is turning right if it is acting out away from the center it will not turn it will turn in other direction right so to turn it inside it the force acting on it should be towards the center and this force is called centripetal force right and then what is centrifugal force centrifugal force is an imaginary force acting on the body it is not the real force it is imaginary force which is equal and opposite to the centripetal force and it's called centrifugal force right from where it comes why we are imagining like there is a force which is equal and opposite to the centripetal force what is the need of imagining this the need is now consider if a force is acting towards the center correct but it is not so if the force is acting towards the center the body should start moving towards the center correct eventually okay uh, in uh, i mean uh, it should start moving towards the center while having circular motion correct but it doesn't happen the object in uniform circular motion remains on the circular path it doesn't it doesn't get pulled by the center right uh, for example if earth when earth is moving around the sun right sun is pulling earth that is why it is not able to go out of its orbit right but it is not pulling the earth such that earth is pulled inside the sun no something is balancing there which helps earth to remain in its orbit even though it is it is experiencing inward force by the sun then what is it what is it that is balancing it so if if i give you a small hint see now when an object is moving in circular path okay okay so at every time the velocity is in as the tangent to that point correct so now the object is here so my velocity's direction is in this direction correct so if no force no centripetal force is acting on it it should be the object the body should be continuing on this path correct because we know by newton's law that if the body body will continue to be in its motion uh the body will continue to remain in its state of motion or state of rest if no force is acting upon it right so if we consider in this situation at some point in time the centripetal force is not acting we stopped applying centripetal force okay now at that point no force is acting on that body right so bo the body now let's consider this point okay B object is here sent we are stopped we are removed the centripetal force now the body at this point the motion was in this direction correct it will continue to be in this direction correct so what is it this is this is inertia right this is inertia which is which is trying to put the object in its 
स्टेट ऑफ मोशन और स्टेट ऑफ रेस्ट राइट सो इफ दैट हैपन्स राइट सो इट इट सो द बॉडी इज ट्राइंग टू कंटिन्यू इन द सेम डायरेक्शन बट सेंट्रिपेटल फोर्स इज नॉट अलाउिंग इट टू डू दैट बाय पुलिंग इट डाउन करेक्ट पुलिंग इनवर्ड सो basically the force one force or the inertia is trying to keep the object in the with the velocity is he he on this point velocity is in this direction so inertia will try to put this body in this to move on this line due to inertia okay it will try to continue on the same line but centripetal force will pull it down right so basically this inertia which is uh, the property of the body balances the centripetal force and so that th that inertia the force due to that inertia we are considering as the imaginary force that is centrifugal force okay got it good so an imaginary force acting on a body equal and opposite very important equal and opposite to the centripetal force that is how it balances right otherwise it will be thrown out or it will be taken in but it remains on the circular path so it is balanced and how it will balance equal and opposite to the centripetal force this is called centrifugal force right so here we are at the end of our less first lesson force we have we are we have tried to cover all the concepts okay if you are not sure just revisit the video okay try to understand the concepts because once the concepts are clear answering the questions giving reasons solving numericals become very easy because you know what you are dealing with right so so do do subscribe this channel and don't forget to enable notifications for videos because i will be posting questions numericals and some tricky questions so all those videos i will be posting on the same channel right and uh, i don't want you to miss them right because we we have just completed first part of concepts now the question and answers numericals and tricky questions those parts are coming they will be coming soon right so don't miss it when you enable the notifications you will be notified as soon as i post the video okay don't stop learning in any situation and happy learning bye bye thank you